New Thought Media Network. We are a global broadcast network of positive music, media, and entertainment. Inspiring humanity's evolution along the journey of enlightenment and creating a world of love, peace, empowerment, and prosperity for all. New Thought Media Network. Positively inspiring. Well, hello there. That was all amazing. That intro stuff. That was uh, that was very cool. This is I'm Ken Ludwig, and this is my inaugural show, the uh, the Vibrant Living Hour on New Thought Media Network, which is uh, I'm just absolutely thrilled to be here. And uh, I think today I'm just going to talk a little bit about why I'm here, uh, what what brought me to this space. I'll tell you a little bit of a little story about something that's going on in my world, and tell you what uh, what we're going what the show's going to be about. What are we going to do here? Why did I go? Why am I doing this? Right? Um, you, I always used to joke years ago that uh, you don't do a an internet radio talk show because you don't think you have anything to say. Uh, so I will try and make all of the content of what I have to say worth listening to. And let's hope we go there. So the New Thought Media Network. I just I love this concept. I love what uh, what Reverend Robert Brzezinski has put together here. I think this is amazing. It is something that has answered a call for me that goes back many years, actually goes back over a decade. Back in 2008, uh, the end of 2008, I believe it was, I started doing a radio show. It was called What We're Thinking About. And I did it for a little over five years. Uh, we finished up sometime in 2013, I recall. And I really, really loved doing that show. But I came to realize over the course of the last many years that maybe that show, maybe that whole concept was a little bit ahead of its time. And obviously now the world has caught up to the podcast idea, the live radio show that turns into a podcast. The different names always confound me. What I really did originally back in the, in the um, 2008 to 2013 show, it was for all intents and purposes a podcast. It was a live show, but then we archived it. And those were, I guess today you would call them podcasts. But I love doing that show, as I said. And I love the, the idea of doing a show about living a more positive and more spiritual life. And that has kind of morphed into the Vibrant Aging Hour, which is really about lifestyle, the lifestyle being a more positive and spiritual life, but maybe getting a little bit more specific into uh, into the human, if you will, into the idea that every single aspect of our lives, every single aspect has four components. They are mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical. And I intend to kind of look at life from those four perspectives to to bring subject matter around how do we live at our highest vibration? How do we get to a point where we are really attracting to us the highest vibrational manifestations we can possibly draw to us by living a vibrant life? The, the other piece of that puzzle is there are those four components to every aspect of your life, mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical, as I said. But they are all within one big concept, which is consciousness. So you can't really talk about those four things, those four components, without the concept of consciousness expressing itself in, through, and as me, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. So that's kind of the basic idea of where we're going to go with this show and what it's going to be about. Back in the day, I interviewed a lot of people. On, uh, on what we're thinking about. I'm going to hopefully bring to you the same kinds of people. I mean, I, I interviewed I interviewed back then some people who are big names now who really weren't such big names maybe then. I interviewed um, what I always consider to be the three bigs, Greg Braden, Bruce Lipton, and Joe Dispenza. Uh, Bruce Lipton was really the best known of the three back then, but maybe now is the least known of the three uh, in, coming forward into 2021. The I interviewed people like Lynn McTaggart, who was, to me, what I what I said to Lynn was, in the beginning was Lynn McTaggart and Gene Houston, and then everybody else followed. And that was an extraordinary person to interview and to be around and to have that consciousness with me. I hope to bring you those kinds of people to this show. I interviewed musicians back then, new thought musicians, um, great people that I truly, that have come to be friends that I know and love dearly, um, Jamie Lula, Carl Anthony. 
Barry Ebert, Faith Rivera, um, Lucinda Drayton from England. All those people were, were people I interviewed on my show and I just enjoyed that. Great new thought thinkers, uh, Dr. Roger Teal, Cynthia James, actually the, the, the creator of New Thought Media Network, Reverend Robert Brzezinski was on my show. I believe he was on my show more than once. So that was the kind of things, those are the kinds of people that I brought to expose to the space so that you would get to know them. They would get to know a little bit about how to how they were expressing into the world from a different level other than what maybe their given expertise was as author or performer or singer, songwriter, whatever that looked like. I loved, again, I, I don't want to repeat too much how much I loved it, but I loved it. But it came to an end. And when it came to an end, I was kind of ready for it to end. Um, I had did I did the last six months on Voice America, which is the of uh, the largest internet broadcast company in the world, or it was then. Um, I believe it's actually gotten bigger since then, so probably still is. And it just kind of it, it ran its course. There weren't sponsors. There wasn't this. There wasn't that. Whatever it was, I was kind of done with it, and I just let it go. And then we fast forward to this to this time in history, and it is it's an interesting time in history. It's a time when we are absolutely um, drowning in information, but thirsting for knowledge. There is more BS on the internet than there is truth. And I think we've all come to understand that. If you wanna find out something and, and, and get the truth about an issue or about a subject matter or about an issue um, in your body or something like that, you need to, you actually need to research. You can't just Google and get the right answer because that's just not the way it works anymore. It used to be back in the day, you get a good answer. Now. You might get two pages of baloney before you get to the real McCoy. So it's a time for, it's a time for wisdom. It's a time for, you know, knowledge is power, they say. I'm not sure I believe that. Knowledge in action is power. And what we need to do is bring that knowledge into action and create from it the wisdom that we all need to lead, lead a higher life, a higher level life, a higher vibrational life. Uh, that, that, more positive and spiritual life that I talked about in the beginning. That's what I think is really, really important to all of us at this point in history. We also have this, this COVID thing going on and it is, it is something that no one, I shouldn't say no one, there are very few people alive on this planet today that have ever experienced anything like this. I know there's a few people still alive who experienced this, the, the Spanish flu in 1918 and 19 by virtue of being children at the time, but no one in our adult lives, we've never experienced anything like this. And I think a lot of us have found the urge to make this a time of reflection, a time of growth. Who am I? What am I doing in this world? Am I enjoying myself? And let's make really clear, enjoy. It's about joy. Am I enjoying myself? Am I having a good time? And if I'm not, what can I do? What can I do differently? What can I bring into my space that not only up levels my existence, but up levels the existence of everyone around me? What can I do? A time of reflection, as I said, and I have taken upon myself um, that time to reflect. I have, I've dived very much deeper into my daily spiritual practice, which I refer to all the time as DSP. Um, which is my my meditation, my prayer work, a little bit of reading maybe, might even be a little bit of journaling, not always, but maybe just once in a while. And that's, you know, a half hour to an hour every single morning, pretty much every single morning of my life, which I've been doing for the better part of 40 years. And I really think that I've I've grown as a human being just in this past year. And and <laughs> let me step back a little bit. In In actuality, my life hasn't changed as much as a lot of other lives have because I am a self-employed entrepreneur. I've been working for home from home for over 15 years. So when they shut everybody down, all that meant was my wife came home from her part-time job. And my beloved Lisa is um she has expanded herself and what she is doing in the world professionally and spiritually as a direct result of this lockdown of the COVID thing, whatever you want to call it. But I think it's important to those of us who have who have heard the call and decided to um, to answer it, to express it. I think it's a time to outrageously and courageously express 
what it is we feel, what it is we know, what it is that is important to us. The, um, the courageous and outrageous piece of that expression is to not be afraid, to be totally fearless, to express what it is I feel and I know and I believe into the world without worrying about what anyone else thinks. Because it's when you get to be a certain age, you start to care less and less and less about what other people think about anything. And I guess maybe I've reached that point because it doesn't matter to me in so many instances what other people are thinking. What I do want to do is express into the world what I'm thinking. And if that affects anyone positively, bingo, that's all I'm here for. Then I've accomplished what I'm sitting here to do on the Vibrant Living Hour. So, yeah, there's an idea of, of where I'm coming from. There's an idea of what I'm about, why I'm doing this. And I hope that I, again, bring bring you good content. I hope I bring you value. I hope you will um, stick with me through the good times and the bad times. I remember from doing my old radio show, not every show was a home run. Some of them were just uh, foul tips. Some of them were just blunt singles. But always take your best swing and do the best you can and give it your best shot, which is, uh, which is what I'm endeavoring to do here uh, today. And hopefully every Tuesday at 3 o'clock Mountain Time here on New Thought Media Network. So one of the things I wanted to accomplish today was I wanted to tell you a story, and it has to do with this whole idea of what I've been talking about, of, of answering the universe's 24-7, 365 invitation to be more. The universe has that invitation out there, again, 24-7, 365. It's never not there. The universe is always inviting me and you and every single person on this planet, every sentient being in the universe, people correction, every being in the universe to be more. And the minute you accept that invitation, you are more. You instantaneously become more just by accepting it. You have changed who you are. You have changed your consciousness. You have changed the neural connections in your brain and physically have changed the architecture of your brain and physically changed who you are by doing so. That's a whole nother show. But that ties into the story I want to tell you about me. I am, I'm loath to tell you how old I am, but I guess I'm going to do that anyway, because it shouldn't be any secret. I'm 70 years old. I just turned 70 back in December of 2020. And I pride myself on being in good shape, taking care of myself, working out, exercising. Um, I probably have put on a little more weight than I wanted to over the course of uh, not being able to go out and enjoy myself. I maybe stay in and enjoy myself a little too much on the snacks and the treats, but that's another story altogether. I take care of myself. And as I said, I meditate and I pray every day. I work out three to five days a week. I walk a lot. I take good care of myself. And last in 2019, I started to get a pain in my lower back on my left hand side. And it was, and then it, it started to run all the way down my leg and come, you know, eventually recognized it as sciatica. And it was just beyond annoying and painful. Uh, I used to work concerts uh, in, in 2019, end of 2019 and early 2020 before they shut down live music. I worked concerts and, uh, and you know, was, was working the floor of a concert all night long. And by the time the night ended, I was limping back to my car. It was very annoying. And it took a long time, a lot of, uh, a lot of ibuprofen, a lot of massaging, a lot of this, that, and the other thing. Finally, it started to subside a little bit, and it's and really has become, um, I won't say a total non-issue, but it's it's less than what it was before. That's for certain. But about three weeks ago or so, no, I'm sorry, a month ago, I started to get some pain in my lower back, right in the center, and then I got a new sciatic pain down my right leg instead of my left leg, and that really that one is really painful. And it's there and it's there all the time and it interrupts sleep. It, I can't sit for very long. Um, actually this chair is the most comfortable chair I've sat in and I can't tell you how long. And I don't, I don't remember why I don't use it other than the fact it's too high to sit at a desk, but it's sitting is, a, is an issue. It's problematic. Even sitting in the morning for my meditation, but, and that's part of the, that's part of what I'm going to tell you here. So I went to the doctor. And I love my doctor. She's totally a Western medicine person, but she gets me. She understands me. She tells me what I need to do. And she knows that I'll go take care of it in some kind of natural, organic, naturopathic way. She knows that that's what I'll do because I want to 
address those things from a holistic standpoint, not just from a let's treat the symptom for the Western medicine model, which is not, not my favorite model. But I do my, love my doctor. She specializes in, um, I hate to say this, older people, but you know, you have to be 70, I guess you're older people. And uh, she's very quick to get to take care of me. And she sent me off for x-rays. I was having some pain in my knees. They x-rayed my knees and they x-rayed my lower back. Come to find out, I have what's known as degenerative disc disease, which is primarily something that, that just progresses as you get older. It can come from injuries when you were younger. It can come from all kinds of different things, chronic abuse, whatever it is. But it's the degeneration of the discs between the bones of your spine. Now, obviously, <laughs> obviously that's not a good thing, uh, but it's, it also can be very painful. So I have degenerative discs or degenerating discs coming down from my mid um, thoracic spine, which is kind of in the middle of your body. You have your um, your cervical spine up top, the um, the thorax, the, the, the thorax, the uh, those the T the T spine. Um, your, and then you have your lumbar spine, which is the lower. And I threw my in, in um, the whole middle of my back and all the way down to my pelvis. I have these discs are degenerating. Not terribly so, but enough so that they're there and they're painful. I have the um, the Two discs above where your, your spine joins your pelvis, that one's out of whack, about almost three quarters, three eighths of an inch forward of where it should be. And then there is the sciatica down the right leg. And all of this is very painful. It is all, again, I can't sit, I can't sleep. The most comfortable position is standing up, but you can only stand up for so long. You got to, you know, you have to relax somewhere along the line. And now I have the prognosis of, or the, the diagnosis, so I know what it is. The prognosis is not good. The prognosis is do something about it or it gets worse. So what do you do? This is where vibrant living comes in. I mentioned to you earlier, I exercise three to five days a week. Well, now I stretch and do some yoga and modified yoga poses every morning and every evening. I'm also walking at least a half an hour every day. And all of those things are conducive to putting space between your, your, the bones of your spine. In other words, where the discs are failing, I'm working on elongating the distance between the bones to kind of compensate for those discs. That's all well and good. And I'm also, in, I'm also exp, um, researching what it is I need to do, what do I need to adjust what kind of nutrients, what kind of supplements do I need? What kind of foods do I need to eat? Believe it or not, eating lots and lots of berries is really good for your spine. Uh, there's, there's so many things that are so interesting about the nutritional piece of the puzzle. And I'm clear as I can be that we are a direct product of what we put in our mouths. And if I want to heal things, I need to give my body the fuel it needs to heal things. I need to give it the ingredients it needs to create the, um, the, the, um, the, the pieces that it uses to construct new cell structure, the pieces that it needs to create a vibrant immune system. I need to give it the, the ingredients to do that or it doesn't happen. I mean, the body does not make for a good, solid, vibrant immune system with the chemicals that preserve the packaged foods that we buy in the grocery store because your body doesn't know what the hell that stuff is. So it doesn't do anything good with it other than maybe... The biggest negative is it creates some inflammation, but that's, again, that's a whole nother workshop, as they say. The, so those are the physical pieces. That's the, remember, mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical. That's the physical piece is to do the, the movements, is to create the distance in my spine using yoga. By the way, I have an inversion table coming. That's one of those tables where you strap your ankles in and then you turn yourself upside down. Again, to lengthen the spine in the reverse um, formulation, if you will, that gravity would do. Because rather than standing upright, I'm upside down. Gravity is now pulling my shoulders down and expanding my spine. That's the plan. And there's lots of lots of really really good science on the inversion table and how it helps and benefits what I'm go what I'm going through. Again, all physical. One of the first things I did when I got the diagnosis was 
I went back to a book that I had read, um, I'm going to say a dozen years ago. I'm thinking it might be, I think the book came out in 2005. I'm going to say I read it in 2008 or nine. So it's this book here. It's Evolve Your Brain. Evolve Your Brain is Joe Dispenza's first book that he wrote. And if you remember anything about Joe, if you know anything about Joe, the the, the basis for all of his work really started with an, a catastrophic accident. And I went to the book and I wasn't sure where that was in the book, but I knew it was in somewhere near the beginning. I found it almost instantaneously on pages 15 through 30. Joe describes in detail for 15 pages. He does it in great detail, but he does it very concisely described in great detail how he was a very, very, very physically fit man in his early 20s who was he's a chiropractor. He graduated from chiropractic school. He was also a licensed hypnotherapist before he ever graduated from um, chiropractic school. and. He was in, it just took great care of himself, was in great shape. All of those things was in a triathlon and was in the bicycle portion of the tri triathlon, came to a corner on the, the, um, the track. The, the guy who was on the, who was directing traffic for the bikers, he waved him on. He went through the, came around the, the corner. And as he came around the corner, he saw a flash out of the corner of his eye and an SUV hit him at 55 miles an hour, destroyed his bike and him and basically crushed his spine from t8 which is the the um your the, your numbers go down okay so t8 would be there's 12 of those so it'll be 8 9 10 11 and 12 they were crushed and then the lumbar spine is five those were um one two three four five they were all crushed and he's covered of course he was full of gravel he was destroyed basically i don't want to get too deep into the weeds on joe but he was told he needed to make a decision to have an operation to put rods in his back within three to four days. Otherwise, the natural healing processes of his body would determine that they would need to go in from the front to put rods in his back. <laughs> Just going in from the back sounds unpleasant enough, but putting in rods from the front. Joe got all kinds of opinions. He got um, he got the best, I believe, neuroscientist he could, or um, neurologist he could find to give him his opinion. And everybody told him the same thing. Get the operation or you'll never walk again. Joe had uh, some friends take him out of the hospital and they took him to a friend's house. And over the course of the next 10 weeks, he healed his own body. He used raw food. He used some of his knowledge of hypnosis, but he used his knowledge of the body as a chiropractor and his knowledge of the mind and rebuilt his spine in the course of 10 weeks. By 12 weeks, he was seeing patients back at his chiropractic office. So this was something I did just kind of flashed in my head. Here's this book that I read, whatever, a dozen or 13 years ago. I said, let me go back and revisit what Joe did for his back. So I actually read those 15 pages twice. And then I went back to the beginning of the book and I'm now rereading the book. And actually, so I guess I really read those 15 pages three times. But Joe's the best example I know of being able to create for yourself the physical well-being, the physical processes to rebuild your body. So I took Joe's my knowledge of Joe's work, I took my knowledge of metaphysics, I took my uh, my background um, as a spiritual teacher and healer, I took that all into my morning meditation. I now meditate, um, probably half my meditation is me seriously focused on rebuilding those discs, on separating those bones of my spine, on moving that L4 vertebrae, the one that's out of whack, back the little more than the little less than three eighths of an inch it needs to go back to be in alignment to uh realign my si joint that's your sacro sacroiliac um i guess there's two of them there and they're realigning them and working on the pain of my sciatica i did some of what joe taught me to do in the book which was i went online and i got images of the spine 
different angles, different positions, different descriptions of degenerative disc disease and how it how it works and and what the prognosis is of it. And I and I took all of that into my meditation. Here's what I can tell you. I don't I tried my my doctor because of my age, my doctor has moved me away from ibuprofen. She's concerned about the fact it's an NSAID, right? N S A I D non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug and so is aspirin is a is an NSAID. she wants me to stay away from both of them i'm a I've been an aspirin guy all my life only in the last few years have i even touched um ibuprofen and i was always afraid of tylenol not afraid but just wary of tylenol because it has um had implications around the liver for years well now ibuprofen has implications around um damaging the kidneys tylenol has it around the liver Aspirin has it around the stomach and the esophagus. There's always something around all of these drugs. But the ibuprofen was doing something for me. The Tylenol did something for me. I've experimented back and forth with the different things. Um, the, the aspirin seemed to actually give me the best results from the standpoint of just relieving the pain because in the morning I could barely get out of bed. Even as I've worked on this, I get it through the day where I can I can maneuver without any problem whatsoever. I go to bed with a little bit of discomfort, but then during the night, it wakes me up. And by the time the morning comes around, it just hurts to get out of bed. And my wife does a massage on me and I do two aspirin and I put on some Arnicare and I go, well, and another thing I do is I go to my, my number one standby here. I want to make sure that I show you these and, just, and full disclosure. I'm a, uh, I'm a, 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 a merchandiser of these things. This is um, CBD. CBD, uh, it's peppermint. My favorite flavor is peppermint on CBD, although I have a choice of six different flavors with this particular company that I represent. This has saved my life from the standpoint of calming down my nervous system and easing my pain. The, the main thing that CBD does in the body is create or facilitate homeostasis. Homeostasis is balance, and it does it in virtually every single system of your body. So I, I use that particular CBD again, which I sell. That just works like a, it works like a charm, for lowering the stress level, calming me down. When you're in pain all the time, it's hard to be at the top of your game mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. So you have to kind of do whatever you can to mitigate the pain in order to get to a place where you can you can help your body using the powers of your, your mental and your spiritual. Back to the meditation. One of the things that Joe Dispenza talks about in, in his book and all his books, I think, is really the idea that when you meditate, you want to sit down with the idea that you're not going to get up until you're a different person than you were when you sat down. Now, that can be on many different levels, but for me, it almost immediately manifested in a relief of pain. And there was a couple of days when I meditated where, as I was focused on the idea that there is no sciatica in God, there is no degenerative disc disease in God. Those are all constructs of the human. And even as the divine spirit is working in through and as me, those ailments are strictly the human. And they're, <laughs> without a doubt, there's some purpose to them. And I know that. I'm still experimenting or, or researching what that, that purpose is. But I got up a couple of days where the pain, in my, and particularly the sciatica, because the, the back pain is just, is, it's, it's just not a constant. The sciatica is a constant pain. It's not a throb. It's a constant, just, it's there. And anybody's ever had a toothache, that's what sciatica is, only in your ass and your leg, and <laughs> it's big. But anyway, um, the meditation has worked. The meditation has given me confidence that I can and am healing this thing in my back, this, this challenge with my physical right there. Another thing I wanted to tell you was there's another, um, this is the wrong container, but there's a cream I use called, um, relief. And it's, it's 
relief cream is it's got a CBD and CBG in it. Also, it's a topical. It relieves that pain as well on the uh, for the um, the sciatica, and part of that is because well, I don't want to get too deep into this, but we have we have receptors on virtually every cell of our body for cannabinoids. It's called the endocannabinoid system, and we have receptors literally every cell. I mean, there's a few that don't, but for the most part, every cell of your body has multiple receptors for cannabinoids. And CBD and CBG are cannabinoids. They come from the cannabis plant, um, primarily the hemp plant. And interestingly enough, you have an abundance of those receptors on your skin cells more than you do on a lot of other cells. So topical creams have a tremendous effect. So those are a couple of things, again, back to the physical. But, <clears throat> excuse me, the work with the mental and the spiritual has been so incredibly rewarding. And it has really brought me to a place of feeling, feeling something that I haven't felt in a long time. And that is my absolute undying faith in the metaphysical, my undying faith in the quantum field, my undying faith in consciousness. Consciousness is primary. Everything else is secondary. Everything else emanates from consciousness. You, me, everyone we know is just consciousness in form. And whatever there is that is a challenge in my life, in this case, it's a physical one, then that I have the opportunity through my own awareness of consciousness to heal that which is challenging me. That was something I came to understand years ago. And maybe as time has gone by and you don't focus on something like that as much, the, the confidence, the, the faith goes away. I had a, uh, I wrote this quote down. This is from Ernest Holmes. And it's a favorite quote. And, it's, and it has to do with what my thinking that was, that was literally going on while I was doing this meditation. This popped into my head. And uh, so I went and found it and wrote it down. Faith is a mental attitude which is so convinced of its own idea, which so completely accepts it, that any contradiction is unthinkable and impossible. Let me read that to you again. Faith is a mental attitude which is so convinced of its own idea, which so completely accepts it, that any contradiction is unthinkable and impossible. That, to me, is the ultimate definition of faith. So totally convinced of itself that anything unlike that is unthinkable and impossible. And that's the place where I came with this mental work for working on my back, this spiritual work working on my back. So that's a... that's. It's kind of the personal piece I want to tell you. I did want to. I want to talk about the pain piece for a second. The. As I mentioned earlier, it's impossible to be at the top of your game mentally, emotionally and spiritually if you feel like crap all the time or if you are in pain. And the only thing that will get you the ability to move into dealing in the aspects of consciousness that are mental, mental, emotional, and spiritual is to distract yourself from the pain. Now, meditation has come in really handy there, but sometimes it's really a challenge to get, just to get far enough into the meditation that you can leave a little bit of the pain behind because the pain is always top of mind. It's always in the forefront. And understand, you know, this is deeper into Joe Dispenza's work, but your body's in pain. This um sciatica this sciatic nerve is is inflamed and it sends a signal to my brain that i'm in pain and my brain receives that signal and sends out the the neuropeptides that say there's pain here and the body responds to that with yeah there is here more pain and then the the brain sends more of that affirmation if you will affirmative aff affirming chemicals that yeah there's pain here and you wind up with a circuit where not only do you 
um, are you are you thinking how you feel, but you're also feeling how you think. So your brain is contributing to that. That's deeper into the work of neuroscience and Joe Dispenza. But the the challenge is then to distract yourself. And what I distracted myself with quite by accident is something that comes from just about every different source on the planet. But um, I, I related to uh, to Abraham Hicks, to uh, to Esther Hicks and, and her channeling of Abraham. And that Abraham says something that I said earlier in the show, the objective is to be in joy. The objective is to find joy. What brings you joy in this life? And I got news for you. I have struggled with that question as long as it's been asked of me because I just didn't have answers. I always figured, you know, what brings me joy in my life should always involve my, my beautiful, beloved Lisa or my friends or my spiritual community or something that involved um, the people in my world. The other day I was meditating. And I have no idea why this occurred. But I was visioning, visualizing, you know, scratching the belly of a little tiny husky pup. Interesting because I've never owned a husky. I've owned a lot of dogs in my life. I never owned a husky. But I was playing with this husky. You know how they grab you them with their paws? And it's just that. And I was sitting there outside on my patio meditating at whatever it was, 7 or 7.30 in the morning with a big smile on my face. And a few seconds into that, I realized that I was not experiencing any pain at all. Pain that had been top of mind just seconds earlier. The message to me was, I overrode the pain with a sense of mental joy. We have a couple of house wrens that have been with us for a couple of years. They build nests in the awning over my next door neighbor's patio. And they're just, they have, I've never heard their song before until I moved here to this place. We've lived here almost three years now. And they have the most beautiful song. And I can hear them over my earbuds when I'm meditating. I meditate with music to kind of get rid of the out, outside world. And right after the puppy thing, I heard one of the wrens in the tree that's right over my head singing their song. And the pain was gone again. And then a little while further into the meditation, one of my true um, loves and, and desires in this world is for travel. And travel to me always involves Lisa. That's part of the thing. And once again, the pain was gone. So in the space of a half an hour of meditating, uh, during the meditation, there was three different instances of joyful thoughts that overrode the pain. Now, the interesting thing about that is, is I've gone back to that in the last couple of days, in particular, the uh, the puppy, because that's I really like that one. That's a great one, man. I'd say anybody who's ever scratched a puppy's belly and had that little wrestling match with them knows how what a joy that is. Uh, there's a, like almost a subconscious thinking that I am doing that to relieve the pain. And it doesn't work. The consciousness, the conscious awareness that I'm doing it to relieve the pain seems to um, negate its ability to relieve the pain. As interesting as that is. So, excuse me while I grab a sip here. There's the question in my mind. I'm 70 years old. I work out. I take care of myself. I, I, I really am into the entire idea of vibrant living. And by the way, on Facebook, my beloved Lisa and I have branded vibrant aging, which is the corollary to vibrant living. Vibrant aging is not something that starts when you're, when you're 60 and 70 years old. Vibrant aging starts when you're 20, when you're 30. It's about making sure that when you get to be my age, you are in as good a shape as I am and have as few ailments as I do. Even with a little back pain and sciatica, I am clear that the purpose to these ailments 
is to bring me back. To bring me back to that definition of faith that I read you. To bring me back to being really, really, really clear that consciousness is in charge. And I channel consciousness in direct proportion to my awareness of it in through and as my life. Am I going to heal my back? Absolutely. Am I going to rid myself of the sciatica? No doubt about it. Because any thought otherwise is impossible. But I'm going to do it by going back to basics, going back to my, my roots of metaphysics and healing. So I think that's, I think that's the message of all of that. My purpose then is to, is, to, is to disseminate this. I'm not the only person with sciatica this week. I'm not the only person with back problems. I'm not the only person with an ailment. Now, if you follow Joe Dispenza's work at all, you'll know that he's he does workshops all over the world and he has amazing things. I mean, I remember talking to Joe once um, over, over dinner here in Denver, actually. Um, once when he spoke here in Denver, um, he and Lisa and I went out to dinner afterwards and um, he was talking about what somebody at, at one of these retreats grew a tooth. I don't remember the rest of the story, but that was enough for me. They grew a tooth. Um, we're in charge. Consciousness is in charge in the great scheme, but we are the, um, we're the focuser, if you will. We're the concentrator of consciousness in our lives in our experience. Yes, what we think about expands. Yes, what we desire comes to pass, provided we're focused and we're focusing that consciousness into a quantum field, into that, that law of mind. So my purpose here on this opening show was to give you that message, was to, to bring that to you um, and to let you know that's what I'm thinking about. So I've got, uh, I keep, I'm, and I apologize, I keep jumping the screen around. It's because every time I adjust myself in this seat, I kick the stand that my, my camera's on. Um, the other thing I wanted to do, just, I told you a little bit about me in the beginning. I wanted to, wanted to tell you just a little, a little bit about my background so that you know why I'm here. I told you what are my purposes to do this, but why I'm here is um, I'm a child of the 60s. I, I'm actually, I, I always think it's kind of unique. I turned 10 in 1960 and 20 in 1970. So the entirety of my teen years was during the 60s, which was pretty cool. It's not a, couldn't have been a cooler time to, uh, to enjoy your teens than the 60s. As the saying goes, might, I might be old, but uh, I listened to all the best music. Take that however you want. But the, I was up to my eyeballs in the sex, drugs, and rock and roll lifestyle of the 60s. And I inhabited that. I was embraced it. And I became a poster child for it. And over the course of time, um, I became a world-class alcoholic and drug addict. And I do mean world-class. And the reason I was so good at it was because I practiced every single day, which is how you have to what you have to do if you want to get good at anything. But just because we're good at it doesn't mean it's good for us. So I practiced that every day, that lifestyle every single day until I got sober at the age of 37 and a half. And that was back in 1988. I've been sober almost 33 years. And I, I started on a different pathway. That's when I first, I, I went back to the meditation, the transcendental meditation that I had learned in 1978. I went back to that when I got sober in 1988. I had not really, it was always there. It was a peripheral thing, but I never, I hadn't really made it a, a DSP, a daily spiritual practice for a very long time. I went back to meditating. I went back to exercising. I went back to taking care of myself. Put all that, that put those childish things aside and went on a different pathway. I really embraced homeopathy. I embraced the holistic approach to taking care of myself. I embraced all kinds of alternative therapies. I embraced, um, I embraced 
chiropractic, I embraced massage, I embraced acupuncture, whatever worked. At one point in uh, in the early 90s, I was told that my thyroid gland was dead and it would never work again. And I was going to be on synthetic thyroid for the rest of my life. And I said, you know what? I'm not yet 42 years old. That's just not going to happen. And I started me on the path of healing myself naturally. I embraced a lot of modalities. And to this day, my thyroid gland works on the low end of normal, but it is normal. And I did that myself. And I did that before I was really exposed to any of the stuff I'm talking about um, today. I got exposed to the, my original ex, um, exposure to metaphysics happened almost by chance in 93, I think, reading a, an article or an ad actually in, remember New Age magazine? I was reading that on a plane flight and there was an article in there about um, becoming an ordained minister. And there was a lot of reasons why I entertained that idea, but I went ahead and did it. So I became an ordained minister in the, what is now the International Metaphysical Ministry. And then uh, I, I was introduced to the science of mind in 1999, basically, is when I was introduced to it. And I read the science of mind textbook, the, the book, The Science of Mind. I read that before I ever even got involved in um, in my spiritual community, Mile High Church. And from there, I'm saying and a lot, aren't I? But that's, that's how I keep my thought processes going. That's terrible. The Along the line, I became a practitioner in the Centers for Spiritual Living um, at Mile High Church. I've been a practitioner for, for 14 years. Uh, and I've been a minister for whatever that was. And I, got, I guess I got ordained in 1995. So I've been a minister for 25, 20, going on 26 years. And those things led me to this path of consciousness. And what, what is this about? I have spent a lot of time teaching this. I've taught it in to teens. I have taught it in workshops. I have taught it on my previous radio shows. I've taught it everywhere I get the chance. I taught it. I, I teach it every time the subject comes up and we have a conversation. Lisa says I go automatically into to teacher mode and I have to teach everybody. That may be who I am um, at the core of my being is I just want to disseminate the information. So that's that's my journey to here, if that matters to you. Uh, I, I think sometimes people want to know, here's this guy talking on the radio, um, on the Internet. Why should I listen to him? And I come to you from a voice of experience. I haven't got my my degree is in is in metaphysics. I have a bachelor's in metaphysics, but I don't have. You know, I haven't got a master's. I haven't got a huge amount of education other than self-education, the books I've read and the uh, the pathway I've followed. And I think that there's there's so much knowledge out there for us to take and convert to the wisdom of who we are and what we're here to do and where we're going in this life. And we can choose to do that or we can choose to hunker down into the norms of the society of today, of burying ourselves in, again, this sewer of information um, while we are just so desperately seeking knowledge. We can go into that. We can go into video games. We can go into um, all of the different constructs of diverting our attention from the inner that are out there. They are part of life. And I think my mission is to make sure that I'm not a part of that. And I guess part of what I'm doing here today is make sure I get the information out that if you're interested in not being a part of it, you don't have to be a part of it either. And I'm here to help and I'll be thrilled to help anybody and everybody I possibly can. So I think that's about... Uh, that's about everything I wanted to talk about today. And I know I still have some time in this show. So I think maybe I'll I'll talk about some some other things that are on my mind as far as the same subject matter around healing. I grabbed another book off my bookshelf uh, just yesterday that I will start reading again today um, from Greg Braden, The Spontaneous Healing of Belief. I remember this being a very moving book in that area of consciousness. And as you can see, if you can see this, you can see all the I'm a sticky note guy, man. I do sticky notes like crazy. So there's all kinds of sticky notes on that book. But that's part of the, that's part of this journey is to read the books, 
gather the knowledge, gather the information, talk to the people who have the knowledge, discuss this stuff. That's what that's what this this network is about. That's what I so love about what Robert is doing here and uh, and Reverend LZ of working with him I did, and all the other people who are doing shows on this network. This is so important to to be able to to have a forum where we're going to talk about things from a perspective of the positive, the uplifting, what's next to solve your challenges, to to conquer those challenges, as opposed to this this, this constant um, pissing and moaning, this constant bitching and complaining. That's what people do now. Everything is a complaint. And and the the I guess part of the alternative to that maybe is the uh, this whole cancel culture idea where people are afraid to express themselves because they're going to get canceled. Someone's going to disagree with them and they're going to get canceled. So I don't, I'm not sure I even understand the concept of that, but we have to open up and be, be just be receptive, allow everyone and receive whatever they have and then embrace whatever works for you. You know, as Ernest Holmes always said, was, you know, just take what works. Whatever it is that you're in, you're, you're delving into, whether it's reading or listening or talking or, or a lecture or a workshop, whatever it is, take it lightly. Take from it what works. Don't take from it what's convenient. Take from it what works. So I know for a first show, this is a little bit short of time and I don't want to just keep babbling on because I got the message out to you that I wanted to get out to you. I'm uh, I'm looking forward to doing this every week on a Tuesday, three o'clock mountain time. I, I think we had maybe trouble today going on to Facebook. I hope in the future we'll get on to Facebook and we'll be able to stream live there as well. Um, I don't know if that was just a temporary thing today or what it was. The I wore this shirt on purpose for the first show, Love Heals. Love heals always, love always wins. Approach everything from that perspective, approach everyone from that perspective. That's not the easiest thing in the world to do, but take it on as a challenge. But the most important piece is to do what I'm learning to do right now because of what is going on in my own physical body. Learn to love yourself. And when you have an issue like I've got, part of that meditation piece is to love my sciatic uh, nerve. Love my lumbar spine, love my thoracic spine, love them all, love the parts of my body that need the love the most. And what needs the love the most? Whatever is challenged. Right now, the planet seems to be challenged. So love them all, man. Love them all. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for the incredible gift of your time and attention. I hope that, um, as I said earlier, you'll join me next time on, uh, on the show. We have our, by the way, you can go to newthoughtmedia.org and click on donate to help support us. That's a really important piece of the puzzle, by the way. Newthoughtmedia.org, ntmmedia.org, ntmmedia.org. Click on the donate button, support us, support what we're doing, um, support our our mission here in life as, as the uh, Robert described the mission or, or recited the mission before at the beginning of the show. I'm sure he does at the top of every show. The mission is big. The mission is real. And the mission is important, man. It really is important. So go to ntmmedia.org and donate some money. And, but, and trust me, trust me when I tell you, anything matters. Go to ntmmedia.org and donate half a buck. Donate two bucks. Donate five. Whatever works for you. Donate 5,000. That'd be wonderful. But donate what works for you. We're not asking you to donate till it hurts. Tell me what works for you. The other thing for me, by the way, contact information for me. You can go to me. I'm on Facebook. I'm just Ken Ludwig. Um, I'm the Ken Ludwig with the uh, with the big black cowboy hat on in uh, Golden, Colorado. And you can find me at that uh, that page I mentioned earlier, Vibrant Aging, also on fa Facebook. I have uh, a couple of other places where you can find me on Facebook. I have a page called Making It Out Alive. Making It Out Alive is going to be a place where I express my political views which aren't necessarily something that we're going to do here on New Thought Media, but uh, but we'll do that there. I have a Coach Ken page, which also um, can help you with whatever your needs may be around, uh, around coaching or around life in general. I am available to help however I can. The other thing I would suggest to you or, or 
present to you is if you have any kind of issues, nutritionally, weight loss, um, addiction, any of those things, I have solutions in the way of um, not only nutritionals, but advice and directions that I can I can send you in. So find me if you need me. I'm here to help. Once again, I'm incredibly blessed by the great gift of your time and attention. I wish you all, all the love and blessings that the universe has to offer. And until the next time, namaste. Have a magnificent rest of your day. New Thought Media Network is on the rise. We're looking to grow with you. Do you have technical media experience or perhaps a desire to learn? Are you willing to volunteer your precious time and attention? We share this message to benefit all. If you possess a computer with a camera and a microphone, we will share our knowledge with you. Behind the scenes or being the star, let us bless our one. Contact us at info at ntmedia.org. Thank you.